So you want to print a manga yourself at home because you want to save money and turn this into this. So let's have a look at the final result we're going to be creating today. So we're going to be creating a manga which looks kind of like this with a hard cover and a back cover too. This is kind of the print quality we're looking at here. Here's what you'll need. For the inside of the book, I use normal printer paper. J Burroughs A4 Premium White Copy Paper, ADGSM 167 CIE Whiteness. For the book cover, I use any thick paper. Quill A3 200 GSM Board. J Burroughs A4 Guillotine. Study Mate Kids PVA Glue 1 Liter. Clamps. A file. A flathead screwdriver or a bone folder. A paintbrush that you're not afraid to ruin. Scrap wood, Adobe InDesign, and of course, a printer that can print double sided, flip on short edge, and A3 pages. Epson ET 16500. Above all else, you need a lot of time and patience. You are going to waste a bunch of paper, ink, and time. And if you aren't prepared to scream in frustration, you are not ready for this process. So don't worry about buying all the brands that I have bought. So they're not going to be available where you are. Just go to your local office supply store and buy whatever you can. And before I get started, I have timestamps in the video description and comment section. Please use these timestamps to navigate to wherever you need. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're going to be using a program called Hakaneku Desktop to download the manga. So let me just search Hakaneku De Desktop into uh, Google and click on the first link here. Okay, so it will show you that there's a download for Hakuneko Stable and Hakuneko Nightly. So you can just download this one here. You can just click this here. And what you can do is you can just click on the version for your system. This is Windows, Mac, Linux. Um, so I'm just gonna download this one here. Okay, so, um, well, I've already down, so you, you will have to, I've already downloaded this here, so I'm not gonna do it, do it again. But you'll download this here and you just press start download and then after you have this done here and then you just click on open and then you install it okay so you can go yes and then install um install everything right so you can just go next 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 and yeah just install everything so i'm not going to down i'm not going to install it again because i already have hakuneko desktop installed so i'm just going to show you what that looks like so if i just search up uh, I click on the Windows button and I search Haku Neko Desktop. You should see that I have Haku Neko Desktop here. So you want to click on this hamburger menu on the top left here. So just change this front end to Ken's Dadle Dark because it just looks so much better in dark mode. Okay, second thing, you want to set the manga directory. Okay, so right here, what you're going to do is just create a new folder here. So just right click create new folder and call this Manga Tutorial um, Nireko. Luko, right? So, and then you can click on here and just select folder, right? So I've already done this. So I've already set my manga tutorial folder here and just select folder. So this will be where your manga is downloaded to. Okay, next thing, just make sure that your chapter file format is folder with images. So not CBZ here, uh, change it to folder with images, JPEG, PNG, WebP. Okay, so, and change the scrambling format to PNG, and the scrambling quality 100, okay? Because this is the highest from what I can tell. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure this is the highest. I don't think you can get any higher. Yeah, so that's the highest. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so other settings here, you can actually make the speed faster by just changing all these to like 100 uh, ms, so 100 milliseconds. Um, however, I do recommend the default settings because we don't want to rip too much from these websites because it can cause, um, yeah, pretty much problems with their websites. And also, it can stop you from downloading and cause errors if you download too fast. After that, just press the, uh, the tick mark here to save your settings, okay? So next, how do we get the actual manga? So today it will be uh, printing Miruko-chan. I probably butchered that, apologies. But anyway, um, what you can do is you can actually just go to mangac123.com and you can just search up the titles. So just click on this search and then search up Mireko-chan. And then, um, yeah, you can just copy this link here. So just go to the manga that you are in and you just copy this link here and just paste it over here. Okay, so just click on this paste button 
on the top right right here. Okay, so you'll see that the manga appears. So just click on this button right here. And you'll see that the chapters load over here. So I've already downloaded all these chapters just so I didn't want to keep you waiting. But what you can do is you can just click on this button here on the top right and it'll ask you to download and you just press yes. And then uh, it'll start download every downloading everything. You can actually just click on this button here and it'll show you what chapters are downloading currently. Okay. So another site that you can also download uh, manga from, but I recommend manga.c123.com the most because they use the official um, translations um, where they can. Um, so yeah, it, the scans are a little bit higher quality, generally, I would say. Um, the other site you can use is Mangadex. Okay, so this is for fan translations again. Um, so you can just click on like the chapters here and you can just copy so just search up like manga decks, the Luko Chan or whatever manga you're looking for. And you can just click on this and then you can just copy this link here to the actual manga again. Now click on the top right button here to paste your link there. And you'll see me Ruko Chan appears again. Yep. So you can see that there's all the chapters here. However, here you want to also click on the filter here and change it to English because you don't want to be getting the languages for other languages, right? So you want to get that and then you can just press on the download all button and it will just download all of them, right? So you can just press download, it will ask you to download, you can press yes. Obviously I'm not going to download it because I already have the versions from, yeah. The final option you have is you can also just go to the websites, buy these translation groups such as Fairy Night University, Angle Scans. Like you can just go to all these websites and generally the scan groups have their own websites where you can download the um, translated uh, versions directly. Okay, so now that's all done. Let's have a look at how to, um, what we actually get once we've downloaded all this. Okay, so if I just go to manga, um, so if I just go to ma the manga folder, which I have downloaded, you'll see that I have all these folders here, right? And they're just filled with JPEG images which is great because that's what we want. Okay, so now we just go to InDesign. So let's just search up InDesign and I'm just gonna uh, open InDesign here. Before we do anything, please, 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 this is very, very important. If you don't do the step, your manga will come out looking very, very wrong, okay? So just go Object, Fitting, and Frame Fitting Options, okay? And make sure that you've ticked on Auto Fit, okay? So make sure Auto Fit is on and make sure it's fit content to frame, okay? Make sure all these settings, so these two settings, auto fit and fit content to frame are actually uh, there and press okay, okay? Because if you don't have this setting, it's gonna be very painful for you in the next steps, okay? So just go object, uh, fitting, uh, frame fitting options and we've checked that everything's okay, perfect. Now, we can press the create new button, we can go print and we can go A5, okay? Because what we're gonna do is gonna have uh, four images on each um, piece of paper. Okay, so four, two images on the front side and two images on the back side. So we're going to go A5, and from here we're going to change this to millimeters. Okay, and now we're also going to change this to three. Okay, so we're going to change this margin to three. And yep, that's good. So we'll have a three uh, margin, three millimeter margin between the images and the end of the page. The second thing is everything else, actually everything else here is fine. Yep, so this is fine. So what I would also do here is I would also just press this down, so press press this download button here to save this preset and I'd call it Manga um, Mirek Uko or whatever, Like, but this is just the tutorial. So I'm just gonna call it Manga Tutorial, whatever. Manga A5 tutorial and save preset. So you can use these in future, right? So you can see that I have my own presets here and I would just click on this preset so I can just create it immediately, right? So I'm just gonna press, press. Um, so if I just change this to millimeters just to double check, um, that's all good. And now I can just press create. Okay, now what are we gonna do here? So what we can do is you have to double click on this A parent, okay? So, or even triple click, okay? So you can see that normally I was on this here, right? And then I triple click on a parent and you can see now I'm on this double page spread because what we're doing is we're uh, changing the parent of the pages. So this parent thing allows you to inherit styles from the parent basically. 
and inherit things from the parent. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this tool, which is the rectangular frame tool. So just click on this tool here and just uh, go roughly in the corner here. You'll see how this is where our margin is. Okay, so I'm, when you click there, so if I just press Control Z, when you click there, it'll automatically try to snap if you're close by. Okay, so if I just do this and then you can see I've created a text, or well, not a text frame, I've created a rectangular frame right here. The same thing, I wanna do the same thing with a very right uh, rectangular box, okay? So I'm just creating another text frame right here within the margins, okay? Make sure you adhere to the margins exactly. Okay, perfect. Now, the thing I also wanna do here is I also want to have some page numbers because it's, it'll help you out a ton when you're trying to assemble this manga together. If you don't have page numbers, you're gonna have a nightmare, okay? And I just like them anyway, so I don't really mind it. Um, if you really, really don't like them, I guess you could get rid of it, but be prepared for um, a lot of hell when you don't know which page is which. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change this font here. So I'm just going to click on this here. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to change this to 24. Okay, first of all, I'm going to change it to 24. And second of all, I'm also going to change this to Bevis New. Okay, so Bevis New. Okay, so Bevis New isn't actually a default font. So if you want Bevis New, just search up Bevis New here. I'll just, yeah, Bevis New here. Okay, so you can go on to font, which has free fonts, and you can just download this. Okay, and just whatever. I'll just download this, and you can just open the folder, and I'll just right click, uh, make a new folder here, Bevis. And then I'll just bring this file inside there. I'll right click. I'll go show more options, 7-zip extract here. So I'm just extracting this file. And then what you can do is you can just double click on any of this, these OTF files like this or this TTF file and just press install and you can just go install the font. Okay, so if you want that. So you may also need to restart Adobe InDesign, just letting you know. Okay, so anyway, now that we have that done and we've picked Bebis New as 24 pit, uh, point font, now we can actually uh, type in the special character for the page, which is under the type. And you wanna go insert special character, markers, current page number. Okay, so it shows up as an A here. However, on the actual thing, it will show up as like the actual page number. Okay, I'm just gonna make this a little bit wider. Make sure you also have enough space on the right-hand side because this is going to, is going to um, move to the right. Because as you get larger numbers, such as 135, of course, you can imagine that if you have this box too small, it's gonna cut it out, okay? So that's good. Okay, so we have this font here. Now what we're also gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, click on this um, text box here, because I changed the text, the type tool to create this text box. And I'm just gonna copy it and press Control V to paste it, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this to the right-hand side here, okay? Now I'm gonna change this to character styles because paragraph styles affects both of the, these, right? Like, have a look at this. If I try to change, actually, never mind. I don't know why, why that didn't. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, I like to change to character styles anyway because usually these two should be linked. But it doesn't matter. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this go to a line on the right hand side, which is perfect, and that's that's done basically. Um, that's all we need to do. Okay, so I'm just going to Control S to save this right now, and I'm just going to call this Mi Ruko Chan, uh, 400 pages. Okay, because I'm gonna print 400 pages this time. Okay, so that's cool, I'm gonna save this. Now, I'm just gonna go back to the pages now, and I'm gonna click on, uh, double click on the, the A page, or number one page. Now I'm gonna start inserting pages. So I'm gonna right click, insert pages, and I'm just going to insert 399. Now be aware that your total number of pages, so if I just insert this many pages, I now have 400 pages, right? Because I just, 399 plus one is 400. Be aware, that your number of pages here must be a multiple of four, okay? It must be a multiple of four. If it's not a multiple of four, you're gonna have blank pages. You have to have, like, you have, must have a multiple of four, okay? So I find it much easier just to do a multiple of 100. So I either do 200, 300, 400, okay? So that's how I just think of it, but it must be a multiple of four. It can be any multiple of four, okay? So it must be divisible by four. Now, the next step is let's actually start adding in our images. Okay, so if I just scroll up to the top here and I just, let me just check I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording, which is good. I'm gonna double click on the page one here. 
Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna change this zoom level. I'm gonna change it to 25% instead of 60. So that's good. Now I'm just gonna go to my folder now, which has all this stuff. And a small note, uh, if you do have any like scanlation uh, JPEGs at the start, you do wanna delete them before you start this process, okay? You do wanna delete any JPEGs that are just like credits. I do wanna say that you should credit the groups that you are printing the manga from though because the scanlation groups work very hard to make the manga that you see. So I have the manga here. I'm just gonna press Control A to select everything. So Control A to select everything. Now I'm just going to drag them in, okay? So you should see the first page come up. Okay, so let's just click on this and we can just keep on clicking, okay? So we can just go left to right, okay? So um, we're going to fix that later. So don't worry about the left to right because manga does need to be uh, right to left. Okay, so you can see there's one small problem here. The numbers are actually behind the manga, right? You can see that it's behind, but I want my man numbers to be on top. So I'm just gonna click on the, double click on the A parent again, and I'm just going to make sure that these numbers here are actually in front. So what I can do is I can just click on the layers here. So if you just go to window, and then you turn on the layers, okay, so window, layers, okay? From there, you can actually create a new layer here. So I'll bring both of these text frames into layer two. So I'm just gonna click and drag. So this text frame is on top. Okay, so you can see now that they're on top, okay? Um, let me just go back and I'll just save this. And if I just go back here, you can see that the changes have now been appropriately added to here. And you can see that these images are now appropriately like added. So these images are actually um, fitting to the frames, which is good. Um, also, one more thing, if you do need to apply the parent again, what you can do is you can right click, apply parent to pages, okay? And you can just say all pages and I can just press okay. And you'll see that it will refresh because um, the parent didn't have any images in it, right? But it doesn't matter. So let's just say that you messed up that and somehow you didn't have that all these parent, all these pages have the A parent, when you were right click insert pages, you didn't choose the parent correctly, okay? So you can just right click and just apply parent to pages to fix that. Anyway, I'll just do this one more time. I'll just drag this in and I'll just do this, okay? So it's actually pretty fast because you just literally do this. Okay, so now that's done, let's do the next chapter. So let me just do chapter two. Okay, so I'm just gonna press Control A again to select everything. Now I'm gonna click and drag these in. Okay, so again, left to right. Okay, so you can see I made a mistake there, right? So I'm gonna press Control Z to go back. Okay, so if you made a mistake, Control Z to go back. Okay, so you can, and it'll bring you back to the correct image as well, which is good. Okay, and I'm just going to bring all that in. Perfect. Okay, so let me just go to chapter three now, okay? Anyway, let's go to chapter three and I'll press control A again to select all the pages and I'll just drag them in, okay? And you can see I'm just going through all of it and it's, yeah, it's quite easy. It's not, it's not too hard, right? So if I just go to chapter four now, control A and I'm just click and drag and then I can just bring all this here. Okay, you can see I did make a mistake again, so I'm just gonna control Z and just bring it back again. And yeah. So now let's do chapter five. So we're probably gonna get a good, uh, tw maybe 15 chapters from this, I think. And that's the awesome thing about printing your own manga. You can decide how much you wanna print, right? You can print way more than a standard volume, right? You don't even need to adhere to like a standard volume or anything. Wait, let me just control Z that. Yeah, I don't know why this is actually cutting out a little bit. It's coming outside of the frame, but that's okay. Anyway, um, chapter six, let's control A and let's just do this again. It's coming outside the frame a little bit. That's a little bit concerning. Um, let me just double check this. Um, let 
Let me just check a parent first. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, so I just made a small mistake here. So I just remade this frame here. So what I did is I just deleted this and I just put a small frame here. And yeah, so I just put it here instead because I was actually, my page was actually going over the margin. It was going, so you don't want it to, you want it to align exactly to the margin. So, so I just control S that and I go back here and you can see that actually the pages are now fitting better. So if I just go to 25 and I just double check that everything is now fitting correctly, which is the advantage of just edit having parents because um, the parent kind of uh, for Adobe InDesign because that will just edit it without you having to edit every single page, which would kind of be quite annoying. Okay, yeah, that's much better. Okay, so now let's just go to the next chapter. So let's go to chapter seven and let's just keep doing the same process. Control A to select all images and let me just um, put in all these images here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put in all the images. So I'm just going left to right. Okay, chapter eight. Cancel and let me just bring in chapter nine. Control A and just same thing. Just keep going. Just go left to right. Just bring in all the images. So yes, like I'm pretty sure there should be some kind of auto create function with this. I don't know, um, but I mean it's pretty fast. I mean I do know that I have worked with actually the blurb, the book write kind of thing. It does have an auto create feature, but um, this is pretty fast. And I think it's it's a very organized method anyway. So, so you just do the same thing by just going to chapter 11. So we're like almost halfway through and I just go control A to select all the images, click and drag them in and just do the same thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep on going. Okay, so we get to one of our first kind of problems here. So I will just show you how to deal with that. Okay, so let me just um, control Z and control Z once more and I'll just escape. So let's see which image there was the double page spread. So I think it was this 13, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is we also do need uh, Photoscape Pro X. Um, it's free, don't worry, uh, Pro X. Okay, so Photoscape Pro X. Okay, so you can see here that this one is basically a, um, you can just download it and install it for Windows 10. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna double check. So I'm just gonna see if I can just halve this image. Okay, so this image, let me just check the property. So I'm gonna right click on the image, properties. So I'm just gonna to go to details and I see that the image is 1,800 times 1,350. So I wanna halve the longer side. So I'm just gonna change this to 900 times 1,350, okay? Because I wanna halve this. This is 1,800 times 1,350. So I'm just going 1,800 divided by two, which is 900 times 1,350. Okay, so I'll just show you what I mean in a, in a second. Okay, so let me just go Photoscape X. Okay, and you don't have, you don't need to use this. You can use like paint or whatever else, but you know, it's just easier. So let me just drag this in. Okay, so let me just click on this image. It's this, um, let me just close this. So let me just change this. So first of all, I change it to the editor here and I'm just gonna drag in image 13. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to click on the crop button here. Now I'm just gonna change this to a custom. So I'm gonna change this again to 900 times uh, 3, 1350, if that was correct. Let me just properties, check that one more time. Details, yes, that's good. Okay, so I can just go okay. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna click and drag. Okay, so you can see when I click and drag, it's gonna to snap to what I specified, which is uh, 900 times Three uh, 1350, okay? And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna s just go crop and just say yes. Wait, oops. Um, 
Why, why did that not work? Oops. Um, do I have, yeah, so this is 900 times 1350 and save cropped area. That's my fault. And now we're just going to say 13 crop. Uh, yeah, 13 crop one. Okay, that's fine. And let me also do drag this to the right hand side. And I'm just going to save cropped area and I'm going to call this 13 crop two. So we're going to use this instead of 13. Okay, so now if I just go back here into InDesign, let me just go to this and I'll just save these two images, right? Did I, where is 13 crop one? Okay, yeah, 13 crop one is here and 13 crop two is here. Okay, so you can see that now that's one way to kind of just halve that. So just one small tip that I did find is when you're actually um, looking at the images here, one way you can easily find out if you have a double spread here that you need to put in is you can sort by dimensions here, okay? So how do you get this dimensions bar, okay? So you wanna right click. So normally you'll have something like this, right? So you'll right click and you go more and then you just press, you click it on one of these things here and you press D, D for to get to D here and then you scroll down and you should see there's a dimensions. Okay, so just make sure you turn on this check mark and press OK for dimensions. Okay, dimensions, turn it on, press OK, you see it here. Now you can filter by this and you can see clearly that we have these images here which are more than the default here. And you can clearly see how large these images are as well. Okay, so now we need to just continue with 14, 15, 16, 18. So I'm just gonna click on this 14 and shift left click to select to there. And now I'm just gonna continue, okay? So you can see that that finished that quite neatly. Okay, so now let's go with chapter 12 now and control A and I'll just keep going. So I'll just go and I'll just, yeah, press cancel there. So I'm up to chapter 13, so I'm just gonna put this one in here. Okay, and I'm gonna to go to chapter 14. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna go chapter 15. Oh, 14.2. So I just pressed Control A to select everything again. And I'm just grabbing the images and just putting them in left to right. Oops, Control Z that. So I just press Control Z to go back, but now I'm just gonna continue forward. Okay, so you can see we have another double page spread. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing. This one, okay, so this is um, page 10. So page 10 here, so I'm just going to prop right click properties, just see what, what the details are. So again, it's a 900. So we need another crop here. So let me just close this and let me just bring in uh, the 10.jpg again here. So I'm just going to crop again. So I have my custom crop, I think already. Again, so what, what is this again? It's 900 times 3, 1350. Remember, you were trying to get half and half, right? So we just wanna half the image. So I'm gonna save the cropped area again. I'm gonna call this, yeah, 10 crop dash one. And then the second one, which is still gonna be 900 times 1350, but I just drag this to the right, so then I can get the right-hand side. I'm just gonna call this 10 crop two, okay? Perfect, now if I just go back, and I'm just gonna go back and use 10 crop one and two. So 10 crop one and 10 crop two. Uh, so that's 10 crop one, now we need to continue with 11, 12 and 17, 11, 12 to 17, okay? And let's just continue. Okay, so let's go to chapter 15. Actually, we've actually got control A and then just left click and drag. So we've actually got quite a fair bit. So I'm just clicking, left clicking just to uh, bring down all these images. We actually have a fair amount. Um, I did underestimate how 
many pages is 400? 400 is quite a bit. So chapter 16, let's go with this. Okay, so I'm just, oops, let me just control Z that twice because that was the image was super small. And yeah. Press cancel. Okay, so now let's go to chapter 17. Okay, and I'm just continuing to bring in these pages. Okay, so you can see we have another double page spread, which is um interesting because you can see that the image is definitely like warped so, um yeah it definitely does not work so let's just go back to i think it's what image this one so it is uh seven so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to do the same thing so just bring this here close this old image bring in chapter seven, uh, image seven, and go to crop again, bring the left-hand side. Um, yep, does seem like it is 1,800 times 1,350, so it's perfect to crop. So I'm just gonna save this, and I'm just gonna call this 07 crop one, and then I'm just going to bring this to the right-hand side and 07 crop two dot JPEG. Okay, so now, uh, what I will do is I will probably make a blank page in between here because um, if I want to get this spread correctly, um, I will have to um, double check that. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll just put this on the next page because if I want the spread to work, actually, I, got, I think I got these spreads the wrong way around actually because I'm gonna have to read them right to left. It doesn't matter, I'll fix this at the end if it doesn't work, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, so you can leave a blank page just to get the um, pages working. Um, anyway, so we've got seven, so let's just go to eight to eight to 20, and let's just bring the rest. Because I think I've got those actually the wrong way around because it really should be uh, right to left. So this one, these images should be reversed. And when I when I actually change this to the right one, you'll see that it will look correct. Because manga is read uh, right to left. Anyway, that's good. Let's see. Let's just bring in this final chapter and we will actually just try this final thing out. So I press control A again to select all the images and let me just bring in all of them. And let me just get the next chapter, chapter 19. Okay, so we do have another double page spread here. So I will have to actually also, this one here. Okay, so it's uh, chapter, so it's 18.jpg, okay. So I'm just gonna have to also do the same here. So let me just close this, it's 18. So let me just put in the crop here and I'll save cropped area. And I'll just do the same. Again, we're just taking half the image and then we're taking the other half of the image. It's just that simple. So let me just bring in, this is number two. Okay, so we have those, let me just so here you can actually just press escape, 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 just to get out of that. Um, escape just deletes the image. So if we just go bring in this image here and I'll just bring the next image on the next page. So then we have, and then we'll just go 19 to 23. Perfect. Okay, and then now chapter 20. So let's bring this one in. Okay. A 
and then chapter 21 You might, you know, I actually might just add in a few more pages just because I kind of want this chapter to end. So the, I want this uh, one to end here. So I'm just going to add in into a multiple of four. So I'm just going to add uh, maybe, tw I don't know, um, maybe 32 pages. 32 pages. Yeah, 32 pages. Um, Okay. Okay, and let's just go to chapter 22. Because I feel like if I just ended off, because I know how this chapter ends, and I'm just like, if I ended off right there, it would kind of be a little bad. Okay, let's just add in another uh, 24 pages. And... Control Z. Okay, so we have two double pages here. Oh, that's going to be interesting. So it's 22 and 23. 22, 23. Okay, so let's just do that. Um, 22. I'm going to save this cropped area and I'm just going to go here. I'm going to save that cropped area too. So, yep, cool, perfect. Okay, so we have that. Um, wait, 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 oops, state modified. And also 23, I need 23 as well. So can you just give me 23? And I'll just crop again. Okay, two, and we're good. Okay, so perfect. So if I just change this around here, and we have 22, one, Is this 22, 1? No, well, well, what is going on here? Let me just press escape first just to delete all those images and let me just do 22 crop 1. Hello. Then 22 crop 2. Then 23 crop 1. And 23 crop 2. Perfect. Okay, Um. then I just need to put in 24. Okay, and then I think this kind of ends off this chapter, so I might as well just end it off here. So I'm just going to press Control A to select all these, and again, just bring them all in. Let's just finish this anyway. Let's just add in another 32 pages. Why not? This will probably be my largest printed manga yet, but um, fair enough. Okay, yeah, okay, so that is 466. It's 466 divisible by, that's a good question. I don't think it is. Um, divided by four, yeah, so if I just go 468 divided by four, yes, okay, so I'll just go 468 divided by four. So I'll, I will have two blank pages, why not? So I have two blank pages and I'll just delete, so I'll just delete some pages here. So I'll just delete all of these pages here. And I'll right click delete page. Oh, come on, man. Um, yeah. Okay, so we are up to, I can just delete this page as well. So delete page. Okay, yeah, cool. So I just right clicked to delete spreads. I selected all the spreads with shift, select, uh, shift left clicking, and then right click delete page and right click delete spreads just to delete all those pages. Because I do need some empty pages here. So I'm just gonna save this here. I think this is a good spot here. Now. 
what we also need is we also need the scripts, okay? So we also need this to read right to left and just to correct that because um, there's a few things that we do need to fit, uh, make that correct. So let me just go um, object and I'll start off by going, um, where is it? Oh, sorry, cancel. So I'm just gonna go uh, window and I'm gonna go uh, scripts. So utilities and I'm gonna go scripts. Okay, so I have these folders here, but what you're gonna have to do here is you have to click this hamburger menu here. Okay, hamburger menu and you go reveal in Explorer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a Google Drive link in the description below to a scripts panel.zip file. Okay, so I want you to download this file here. You want you to click on the top right and download this. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is, uh, first of all, go into Adobe InDesign. So again, Windows, Utilities, Scripts. So open up the Windows Utilities Scripts uh, thing here. So when you click it, you should see that there's a Scripts thing that appears. So let's click on the Hamburger menu and just go Reveal and Explorer. So we have this Scripts panel right here. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Control X. Oh, oops. So I'm just gonna Control X to uh, cut this and just put it control V to paste it here. I'm going to right click, show more options, 7-zip extract here. Okay, so you want to just go yes to all. Obviously, I'm not going to do it because I already have it there. And then I'm just going to delete this file here. And after that, you can just, um, you should be able to just uh, open and close this folder or just win uh, just uh, close this window, uh, cancel, and then just window um, utilities scripts and you should now see that there's a left to right so obviously manga um, manga is read right to left so let's just double click on this and you should see that everything is now correctly done from right to left okay so now we do need to fix those double page spreads and also these numbers here these numbers are actually on the wrong sides now because if, if I just double click on the parent here you should you should see that these numbers are actually on the wrong part so let me just correct this real quick by dragging that to the left and dragging this to the right. Okay, and let me just um, click on this text box, go to properties and just change the alignment to the left align. And this one here, I should wait. So first of all, you should click on this box here, change to character styles first. Change to character styles, then change to left align. Click, click, click on this box here, go change to character styles, change to right align and just save this. And you should see now, if I go back to the pages, it should be reflected correctly on the pages now. Okay, so you should see that basically, yeah, so it'll be on the uh, left-hand side here, which I kind of like that. Okay, second thing is these double page spreads. I'm not sure that they are actually correct, which is a little bit bad. So I'm just gonna scroll through real quick and just check these double page spreads. Okay, so you can obviously see that these double page spreads are incorrect, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, um, can I replace these images is a good question. Um, otherwise I can just uh, right click. Um, so I'm just gonna go back to the manga printing. Yeah, so that was my fault. I should have I should have changed that at a start. That was my fault, but it's okay. We can fix this. So let's just go, and I'm just gonna change the date modified because I can see which chapters had these double page spreads. So it's chapter 11, right? So chapter 11, it was just this one here and this one. Um, I'm just trying to understand. So if it looks like this, would that be correct? Yeah, it should look like that. So it should be the very next one, which is just uh, chapter 14.2. Okay, here it is, here it is. Okay, the double page spread is fine. So let us just, so this one is right. Okay, so let me just put this one in here and this one on the right. Okay, yeah, looks good. Okay, so we fixed that double page spread and that's good. Let's keep going. So the next one should be, cause I'm sorting by date modified here so I can see when it is. Okay, so let me just, this page is fine because I, I do need it for this double page spread to work. So um, let me just, perfect. All right, great. And I'm just gonna save it and I'm just gonna keep on going. Yeah, okay, so this one's the next one, which is chapter 18. Or chapter 19, sorry. Um, 
and chapter there. Yeah, cool. We're good. Okay, so that's chapter 19, and the final one is chapter 22 with the lot of spreads. So let me just save this and just go straight down to that. This one here. And chapter one. Okay, I think we've fixed all the double page spreads now. Now that looks fantastic. Okay, so that's all good now. And now I'm just gonna save this. Let me leave a small note here. In case I wanna keep on printing, I always leave a small note. I just say, um, up to chapter 24, okay? Because we just finished chapter 23. So I printed up. Okay, cool. That's perfect. So I just left that there. Now this is all done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna save this and I'm just gonna file and I'm gonna go file print booklet here. So file print booklet and then I'm just going to, so I'm just gonna just check these settings here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go set up and make sure that this is um, uh, two up saddle stitch, okay? Do not change this to perfect bound. Make sure this is saddle stitch, okay? So two up saddle stitch here, okay? Now, next thing I wanna do is I also wanna change this to preview. And you can see that this is all wrong here, okay? So let them, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go print settings and I'm just gonna change a few settings here. Instead of my actual printer here, I'm just gonna change this to Microsoft print to PDF, okay? Change this to Microsoft to print PDF. Now setup, I'm just going to use A4, it's, you wanna go uh, change this to Microsoft print to PDF, A4 size, make sure it's, uh, landscape this way so on the, sec the second option right here so you can change the transparency flattener it doesn't work it doesn't really work here because we don't really have transparency but we can just change the high resolution anyway um just because and let me just you can also save this preset and just call it like uh manga manga a5 printing okay so i just save that pre preset as manga a5 printing so you can use that whenever that looks good okay and yeah, this looks good. So make sure the key thing we need to make sure is page one and the last page must be the same. So the last page here is 468. If, you're, if you see a different number here, like one and three, this is completely wrong, okay? Do not print, do not print if you see this number's wrong. Make sure that you're using the correct settings here. So make sure that, let's just go to uh, setup and make sure you're using two up saddle stitch, okay? And yeah, just make sure every all the other settings are good. Now you can just print and you should see that it should now uh, print a PDF here. So I can just say uh, me Ruko Chan 500 pages in fact, because I, oh, it's, it's 468 pages. Okay, cool. And then you'll just wait for it to make that PDF. So it is now done. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna check it out. So I'm just going to bring this here and I'm just gonna go to Manga Printing and I'm just gonna go to Miriko Chan and just double check some things. And then I'm just going to print it out, okay? So, um, but we need to actually just check the options first. So let's just see. So page one and last page are the same, which is good, okay? So this is how it should be. Also, just one thing, I do recommend that you use 200 pages for your first prints, okay? Don't print as much as I do here because if you don't know what you're doing, um, so this is because if you mess up, it can cause you to like just waste like 300, 400 pages, right? So I really, really suggest that you use just like uh, like 200 pages on your very first prints. This is my third pay, uh, print here. That's why I'm confident and happy to print 468 pages. Uh, before I do that, I need to make sure my printer settings, my default settings are all fine, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to printers and scanners. So I just search up printers and scanners. Again, I just click on the first option. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on the default printer, ET16500, and I'm just going to go to printing preferences, and I'm just gonna set the, these following things here. So first of all, I'm gonna turn off job arranger light. So I'm just gonna use um, just the normal preset. So it's just gonna be auto select, A4, uh, landscape, plain papers. I'll use standard vivid just because I wanna try that out. So I'll use standard vivid, and I'll also just change this to two-sided printing to auto short side, short edge binding, okay? So 
Just change it to auto short edge binding, not long edge binding. If you do use long edge binding, this is not gonna work, okay? So short edge binding. So next thing, just click on print density. By default, it will change it to minus 30 and 10 seconds, okay? You do not want this, okay? So you wanna go to user defined and you wanna change this back to 0% decrease in print density and zero seconds for increased in ink drying time. And just press okay. And then now this is all good here. Turn off quiet mode um, because yeah, it just makes it slower. Same thing, um, let's go to more options. Make sure you turn off high speed because high speed, this setting here, will cause your print, like it will cause your prints to jam, okay? So turn off high speed and make sure all these are, settings are off and that is it. Okay, so from there you can just press okay and what we're gonna do is I'm just going to uh, do this one more time. So I'm just gonna print and I'm just gonna use print using system dialogue here. I'm just gonna use more settings and just verify that all the settings here are correct. So I have landscape, color, auto short edge, binding, standard, vivid. We're looking good. And I'm just going to start to print here. So I'm just going to print like this. So I'm just gonna print. And I'm just gonna wait for this all to print out. Okay, so I'm just looking here, like I'm just looking at these sheets here, and I just wanna see that everything's printing out as I expect. Okay, so what I have here is I have page one, and I have page 468. Okay, so that's good. And I'm just checking for any like imperfections in it. it like second thing, so just with these first sheets, because these first sheets will show me exactly how this is gonna turn out. Second thing, I also wanna make sure that this is just angled slightly upwards by pulling it out because that will actually help it print a little bit just from my experience okay so it will help it just like slide back into the printer when it's doing double-sided printing i didn't mention that the the print the printer should be inclined so this should be inclined what i mean by that is so let me just make it uninclined for a second here let me just push it in so okay so you can see here how it is kind of straight right so what I really suggest that you do, from my experience, is to make it kind of inclined like that. Because from my experience, when doing double-sided printing, uh, this is just a little bit better, and it means that you have less jams. Just in my experience, I don't know if that's actually true, but I just do it anyway because it works for me. Now, uh, also another thing I wanna let you know is this will jam, okay? So it's 100% guaranteed. I know from experience that just printing this it will jam, okay? So at some point, it's gonna jam and you're gonna to have to unjam it, okay? So you're gonna to have to lift up this cover here, so, and then to just take out the piece of paper here, okay? So there's actually, there's a hold here on the right-hand side and a hold on the left-hand side that you can use, yep. So you can see it's jammed, okay? So in fact, it's just saying, that error message there is saying, paper jam, remove the jammed paper, okay? So don't worry, this will happen, this is fine. So let me just also just bring I'll just put these two and I'll, I'll just, I like to grab both pages. So, and then just grab them and just put them aside. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them on the side on the desk. And what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna put this up and I'm just going to click on, so I'm just gonna lift up this printer cover here. Okay, so this happens very often, okay? So don't be frustrated, it's okay, because this is gonna happen very, very commonly. Okay, so usually what will happen is it just prints, because it's short side printing, it jam tends to jam a lot more often. It's just an inevitability um, because it's short side printing, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is just grab this sheet of paper and just put it on top, okay? So it's okay, so you should leave it on top here. The reason why is we can tell that we need to print this sheet of paper later, okay? So we're just gonna let it like this, okay? Okay, so the fastest way to deal with misprints is really just to make a separate pile for the misprints. So you can see here, I've just made a separate pile for all the prints that did not work, okay? And then I'm just going to reprint those ones, okay? Because, and then I'll slot it back into the full text block right here, okay? So pretty much I can see these pages here. You can see it has like page three. So obviously this will be printing three and four. This will be 65, 66, 69 and 70, 71 and 72. 
So that, that just makes it very easy to print. Like rather than having to rifle through the entire text block just to find the misprints, it's easier if you just separate them out and then reprint them uh, by themselves. So yeah, that's how you would do it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close this printer here, just carefully. And I'm just gonna continue the printing, okay? So I'm just gonna continue printing, okay? And it will seem at times like it just keeps on jamming and everything's failing, but it's okay because you need to realize that this is normal, okay? So, and it will just do it. So you will have to just keep on checking and it will jam every four kind of pages, unfortunately, from my experience in like when it's, when it's bad. So just keep on unjamming it and then just press the printer color kind of thing just to continue the printing, okay? So this is the part where I mentioned patience is very, very key because you are going to run out of patience very soon. You're gonna be like, oh my God, why does it not print, right? And like, why does it keep jamming, okay? So just keep on with it and just let it print, let it do its own thing and just supervise it and just let it just print again and again until it succeeds through. So yeah. And eventually you will just keep building up this stack of papers here, right? So you can just take them off at like a period, right? For example, here, I might just take off these two, right? I might just take off these two and I'll just lay them flat on top. So I'll lay them flat on top like this and I'll just bring them down onto my other sheets like this, right? So I'll just put it on there and I'll just put it on like to a table or something. And I'll just keep on gathering these up, okay? And you can see that the standard Vivid actually performs pretty well, surprisingly. Um, I never actually really tried standard Vivid, um, but it actually works pretty well. Okay, actually I put it the wrong way side, but the, the printing quality is actually pretty decent with standard Vivid. Cause I've, the experience that I've had is normally it's not um, dense enough. Like the ink color is not, doesn't really match the screen. Um, however, this is actually pretty decent here. It's not the best, but it's okay. So I just wanted to offer you a comparison between matte paper and just normal paper here. Okay, so when I'm talking about matte paper, let me just show you what I mean. So when I'm talking about matte paper, this is the matte paper that I'm using. I'm using A4 premium digital gloss paper, uh, 120 GSM, 120 CIE whiteness. And this is, it does say for use with laser printers, my printer is an ink printer. So um, yeah, it may not work as well. So just take that with a grain of salt and yeah, but I just wanted to show you the difference between them, okay? So first of all, like because I just made a few prints just to test it out and I wanted to offer a direct comparison here. So this is just normal paper here, okay? And this is the... Um, matte paper okay so that's one of them okay so let's just have a look at another comparison here okay let me just bring this one here so the the the, the paper feels kind of like smooth and you can see it has a, a nice matte finish so it's kind of glossy um but something to be really aware of is that if you're using ink you can see it's it's kind of this ink has come off on my fingers here okay so this black especially you can see like this finger marks there because when I just touched it, the ink just fell off, okay? I don't know if it's because I'm using ink instead and I should be using like toner um, or powder, um, but yeah, it's it, that's just one thing I really don't like about it. Second of all, this gets jammed really, really easily, okay? So because it is 120 GSM, GSM um, which is grams per square meter, uh, this printer here gets jammed a ton, okay? So this printer, um, it will like grab two sheets at a time or something like that. It's just like something that even when it's just printing, printing single-sided. Another thing is you have to print single-sided with this, which is not what I like. I don't like printing single-sided at all because it's more work and if it messes up, it becomes even more messy. Um, and it's really easy to mess up as well. Okay, so this is just paper here and this is the glossy paper. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the difference. So it does look more vibrant, definitely. Like, it does definitely look more vibrant, but there are some things that I don't like so much. So if I just zoom in a little bit here, let's have a look at this here. So you can see that some of these lines can become a little bit blurry. Like, it's like they can become, it's almost like um, they become a little bit 
like it's not a bad thing but it just it looks weird compared to for example here the lines are very crisp you can see that the lines there are very crisp but if i just switch that there you can see it kind of becomes blurry on this uh, paper here maybe it's because the ink isn't really taking to this glossy paper but it just doesn't look as good uh like as in like the the, the lines are just not well defined it feels like it's kind of just blurred and kind of like just at the edges a little bit which i don't really like so much okay and the biggest problem is yeah it grabs like multiple pieces of paper so therefore pretty much i won't really use this the ink drops off and i just cannot really justify that if it if the ink starts dro dropping off in my hands it'll drop off everywhere okay it'll rub against other pages it'll drop off everywhere so i'm not going to be using this kind of paper here so let me just show you an example while it's printing so this is Shokugeki no Soma, right? So this is uh, Food Wars. And we're just going to have a look through. You can see that this is just normal printing paper, right? And it looks pretty good. Okay, so just it looks pretty good here. So um, it's not too bad because really, because honestly, uh, manga creators, they actually print on really, really bad paper. Like, well, at least not really, really bad paper. But it's really cheap paper. Um, like just this paper here, it just I, I don't really like the look of it, honestly. This is an actual manga that I bought from Radio Kaikan in Japan. And you can see that the paper quality isn't that great. It's actually pretty poor, I would say. And it's kind of like tinted. Maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's meant to be like that. But this is really cheap paper. So whatever office paper you're using, really, um, it's not going to be worse. It's not going to be a, a lot worse than uh, just normal manga paper here. Okay, so let me just unjam this again. So I'll just go in here. So I just brought this up and I'm just gonna reach inside this uh, printer, like the, the, the hole inside the printer here and I'm just gonna grab this uh, sheet up carefully, okay? So yeah, I just grab this sheet up carefully and I'm just gonna put it on top. So it doesn't matter. Even if you misprint, just keep on printing, okay? So it's okay. So just let it go and then we can just bring it back down and just continue the print. Also, please keep your computer on the whole time while you're printing. Uh, please set it to because... So without this, the printer will stop printing. At intervals, uh, please just take out the paper and just put it on top. Because otherwise, uh, you might have like a huge stack of paper and this uh, printer holder probably cannot hold uh, like 300 or something. So, and if you do end up accidentally cancelling the print for whatever reason, um, just click on this again and just press um, control P um, or just print, okay. And then we're just gonna print, we're gonna use uh, print using system dialog again, and we're gonna just change this to a page range. Okay, so if what, for whatever reason, the print suddenly cancels or you leave it too long and then it just deletes the print altogether, then you can just use this method. I wanna change this from 73 to 234 okay so something like that i'm just going to check more settings just make sure that's all good and then yeah we're good okay so we can just print yep and we're starting to print again okay so we have all the printed out pages here so this is the back side and this is the front side here so um which is uh pretty cool but this also includes the misprints so i didn't think to actually mark down the pages so I'm actually just gonna to have to go through all the pages one by one uh, and print out each one of the pages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, have it as the backside here, right? And I'm just going to have like one pile, which is where it's coming from. And I'm just going to uh, flip all the pages until I find pages where uh, it is misprinted. So you can see this is a misprint here, right? So let's have a look at the pages here. So right now it is page uh, 231 and page 238. So really, we should be printing the lowest number here, okay? So when you're thinking about printing pages, always print 231, and it will also be 232 here, right? So I'm just gonna go back to my computer and to go and print 231 and 232. Okay, so I'm just gonna print 231 and 232. So I'm just gonna press Control P. Uh, the same thing, it's just print. So if I just go print, print, print button, that's all the same thing. And I'm just going to um, go print using system dialog. And I'm just going to change this custom page range to 231, 232. Okay. Now, 
just go more settings and just to confirm we're still using the two-sided printing short edge binding and I'm just going to try and print it like that okay so you can now see that I have reprinted 231 and 232 so that has kind of worked there and I'm just going to put this one here just like this okay so I'm just putting it face down you can see how 231 uh, lines up with 232 here on this side and then 233 okay so that's how I know I'm just lining up the numbers here that's why these page numbers come in really handy. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep going along. Okay, so I just wanted to demonstrate uh, manual printing for page 21 and 22. Okay, because this is kind of, let me just show you that I printed this three times, okay? So, and each time it had another failure. So let me just show you. So first of all, this one here. So you can see on the left side, it kind of folded there. So uh, when it was kind of just trying to do that, um, so when it was trying to just come back. So that's just a minor one, but I decided to print again. Um, and, and you can also see that it's a little bit angled as well. You can see that it's on top of the page. It shouldn't be, it should, there should be a three millimeter uh, boundary, but you can see it's angled. So that's the first failure. Um, the second failure here, you can see that the angle is just completely off here. You can see that it's completely wrong. Um, a third one, well, I just misprinted this one. This was, oh, and actually, no, sorry. The angle is also wrong. You can see that the angle here is also wrong. So this kind of page is the page where you need to do manual printing um, because um, this page will not print. Uh, it's probably because there is so much ink on both sides here. If you just have a quick look, there's so much ink on both sides here. That's probably why it just cannot print uh, really well. Okay, so whenever it tries to do double-sided printing, it's just going to fail. So here's how we're going to do it. Okay, so I'm just going to show you. So we're going to print um, page. So we're going to use print using system dialog here. And I'm just going to print 21. Okay, so I'm just going to print the page 21. Okay, so I just print it. So I'm just writing 21 there. And I just print. Okay, so we have this page here. So this is printed the front side correctly, right? So it's printed the front side correctly here. Um, and it doesn't have a back side. So we're going to manually print this by putting this back into the printer. Okay, so we're just going to grab the... Um, so I'm just going to grab this A4 page. Okay, so this is the A4 printer paper here. And I'm just going to put it onto the chair here um, because I need to actually slot this in. Okay, so how I'm going to slot this in is I'm just going to put it like this. So you can see how the page is like this. Okay, so it's just this side round. Okay, and the bottom the bottom is blank. And I'm just going to place it back in just like this. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, slot it back in. It's a little bit hard to do with one hand, but I will attempt to do that. Okay, so the bottom side should be blank and it should be facing just this way. Okay, so... That's good. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this back into the printer. Okay, so I'm just going to slowly just make sure everything's straight first and just push very gently, okay? So you shouldn't need to push very hard. If you're pushing very hard, you're probably going to break the printer. Okay, so just slide it in very gently, okay? And make sure you push and then it just slots in, okay? And just press OK, okay? And then now I'm just going to bring out the... Uh, Holder, and then we're just going to print one more time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to print page 22 as well. Okay, but this time I'm going to use some special settings. Okay, so please pay very close attention to these next steps. Okay, so I'm going to use print using system dialog here, but I want to change this to um, I want to change this to use more settings here. And I'm going to change this instead to use job arranger light. Okay, so job arranger light, please press this right here. Okay. And just press OK, and now just change this here to just print page 22. Okay, oops, 22. And then we'll just print, and you'll see something special happens, okay? So you'll see that job arranger light comes on. I don't know why, but just from my experience, this just reverses the image, okay? So because if you don't do this and you just try to print, the image will not come out the right way. If you change it to use print to job arranger light, for some reason, the it just works. Because And I, you don't even need to reverse the image here because if I just check this here, and I go um, 
the file and I go print settings, you can see I haven't reversed the order or anything. I, I don't know why. It just, it just, it works, okay? I don't know. Uh, don't ask me why this one works. Just use job arranger light for the second one, okay? So I just press this print icon on the top left there, so this print icon, and then it says, are you ready to print? And you just press okay. And then it will just print. And we'll just see if this works here. So you can see here that it actually works, okay? So we have this printed manually, okay? So this is this is for the pages that will not work otherwise, okay? So you can see it's it's printed. And if you just tried to print it like normally, um, just with both, like without Job Arranger Light, it, the image is going to be reversed. Okay, so now we're gonna start uh, chopping up the paper. So before we actually use the actual paper here, I really like to actually just use the scrap paper that I already have from Misprints and just to try it out and make sure that I'm cutting this evenly because I've actually messed this up a couple of times now and I always know that the right hand side is actually a little bit longer so this right hand side here is a little bit longer than the left hand side whenever I cut using this guillotine which is just a little bit weird but anyway it doesn't matter so what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a practice run with just this uh, page here and just just make sure that the sizes are the same so this guillotine here can only chop eight pages at a time okay it even says on the actual sheet here okay it says trims trims eight sheets so it means that okay so do not try to trim more than this otherwise you might break the blade okay so i do know there are like some actually really really good um uh guillotines like Newman, which costs like 200 USD. But the cheapest guillotines here, the A4 guillotines, this one's like 60 AUD, um, they will only chop like eight at a time. So that's pretty much what you're gonna do, okay? So I know you can also use scissors, um, but really um, guillotine makes this so much easier if you can chop eight at a time, rather than having to rule a line and then just try to pretend to do it because it's, it's it's really annoying. So this is more precise and it's just so much easier, okay? So I really recommend buying a cheap guillotine just um, that can chop as many as possible, but you know, this is probably the most you're gonna get. Okay, so the way I do this is, if you can see this line here, right? So there's a line here for A5, right? So we're gonna have to chop to A5. So what I try to do is I line up the top part here with that line there and the bottom part here. So I, I'm just on that line there, and then I wanna just go past that line just a tiny bit, okay? And now I'm actually on that line there. So I just wanna hold this here, and I wanna grab this peg and just put it down, it's magnetic, so it will just go like that, and it'll hold it in place. Now it tells you to hold this plastic guard here tightly and just cut down in one clean sweep, okay? So now we have this here. Now I just wanna check the sizing here. Okay, because I want to check by putting this um, together and I should see that the edges all align, especially the right hand edge. That's my biggest problem because my from my previous prints, I always had to sand down the right hand side just so much more. Okay, that's okay here. I'll just do one more practice run with some other one and then I'll just do the actual thing uh, eight sheets at a time. Okay, so let's try this again. So again, what am I gonna do? So I'm just gonna bring up this blade here, okay? And I'm just gonna uh, slide this under the plastic, okay? So again, I'm lining up the top part here just with that, okay? So you can see that this line here, I'm just aligning it up so that it's just meeting both the horizontal line and the vertical line, okay? So I'm just at the edge of it. And I also wanna do the same with the bottom here. Now I just wanna put them together. So just push it over the line a little bit. So it just covers the line. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab the magnetic clip, just bring it down, and now I'm gonna press on this plastic holder, and then just cut straight down, okay? So it's just as simple as that, okay? Um, but it's it can be a little bit of a process, so I really suggest that you check, so you do a few cuts, and just check that you have the right sizing, okay? So that your pages come together uh, very nicely. They can, 
because there can be some times where you cut a piece of paper, for example, if you cut a piece of paper and it isn't very even, right? So if you cut very haphazardly, your pages are not going to be even and you're going to have a bad time. For example, if I just decide to rough, roughly, I'm like roughly this is A5, right? Because I haven't lined up this line here. You can see that I haven't lined this up and I just cut it down, right? Okay, let's have a look here. When I try to line these pages up as an actual manga, you will see that one page is much longer than the other on this side, okay? And if you have this, like, it is not, it's not too much of a trouble for one of these, but if you keep having this, um, you'll see that'll be a big problem. Actually, it is actually a big problem already because you can see this left-hand side here is longer by like a centimeter here, it's longer by a centimeter on the right, okay? so. That's a big problem. So you need to make sure you line this up correctly and follow these lines exactly. So you must have them exactly on top of there, okay? So yeah, let's get started with the actual, uh, with the actual thing now. So let me just bring my pages over here. I'm gonna count eight pages and then I'm gonna start cutting. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting with a guillotine. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so we have eight pages here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, push them together so that they're, they're all even, okay? Because I want them, I want the cuts to be all the same here, right? So I want all the pages to align as closely as possible. Okay, so you can even just like hit the bottom and then hit the sides like from the top down. Just make sure that they're all aligned as much as possible. And then now let's start the actual cut. So let's do this. Okay, so I'm just gonna slide this under. Okay, and now I'm just gonna align these pages here. Wait, let me just align these pages one more time because I think they got misaligned just a little bit when I was moving it. Okay, so now I'm just going to, oops, bring this in. And I'm just going to um, put it in here like this. Okay, so I'm going to align the vertical line there. So I'm just going to go above the vertical line a little bit. Uh, let the, so I still have the white of the vertical line there. So you can see, I, I can still see the white of the vertical line. So I'm just making sure that that's all even. And also, so this side here, I can also see the left uh, white line here, but I want to now overlap. So I want to go over that white line on the top and the bottom now. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this looks good. So I'm just going to hold this in place while I bring in the clip. Okay, magnetic paper clips on. Now I'm just going to press down, and cut. Okay, so sometimes you need to use a little bit more force because this time I think I may not have used enough force because I want to just see how these pages align here. I, I'm not 100% sure because like it feels like it moved during the cut there. So let me just try. So don't actually align them 100%. Just make sure you keep a finger in between because otherwise uh, the pages will go together. But roughly, I want to look at this side. Yeah, it's roughly okay. I, I, don't, I don't mind this one. Okay, so once we've done that, you want to you wanna make a pile here. Okay, so I'm just going to... You want to, so you, you cut them like this, right? So we want to make a pile. So you had this here, you cut them like this. Now you want to make a pile. So this one goes on the right hand side and this one goes on the left, okay? So really make sure that you have this correct. Otherwise, um, <laughs> your pages will be out of order and you will, be not, you will not be happy. Okay, so let's keep on going. So basically I flipped them face down and I have the, the starting pages here from 16. Oh wait, I can't even see in the camera, but I'll just show you in the camera here just because, but basically it's just like this. Okay, so in fact, let me just put it on this side here. If I just move this stuff out, I'll just move the paper stack out while I'm doing the cutting. And so I'm just putting this, so I just took, so basically it was, it was like this and I cut it in half. It was like this, I cut it in half. Now I put this stack here on the right hand side this stack here on the left hand side. So you flip them and then just move it like that. It'll make sense once you actually have the actual manga because you can see the pages and all that. Okay, so let me just do grab another eight pages and I'll actually just speed through this now because 
I've explained it once. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I grabbed another eight pages. Grab another eight pages, and I'm just shuffling them together because I want this cut to be even, right? So I want all the pages to align as much as possible, all the edges. Okay, so that's good. So I'm just making sure by hitting these two sides. Yep, cool, and let's do it. Okay, let's put this under. I'm aligning that horizontal line first, and then I'm just grabbing that. So you can see that, first of all, I make sure that the this line here I'm at the edge of it, so I just hit the white part of it, okay? And then I push over that line just a tiny bit. So that's done. And let me get the magnetic paper clip, put it in place. Okay, actually, let me just check that one more time. Okay, I'll just do it one more time there. Okay, let's put it down. Okay, so you need to really hold this with a lot of force here. Okay, so this, this plastic thing. And you need to actually bring this blade down with a, a significant amount of force too, because we want to really cut this page as clean as possible and don't let it move, okay? So make sure that you use a lot of force like that, okay? That's great, okay, so let's just double check that again. Let's just double check that. So I'll just put a finger in between. I'm putting a finger in between, like you can see I put a finger here, so I don't like, actually just confuse the pages but I'm just checking for sizing here. And I think we're okay, I think we're okay. Yeah, okay, so again, so this is, this is page, so this is page 17, right? Page 17, so page 17, and we have page, we have page uh, 16 here, right? So this one should line up. So 17 should contact with 16, so it should be like this, okay? And same thing here. So we just check the page number. This is 452, right? So 452. Here. And if we just look at over this side here, we have, okay, it's not fitting in the camera. I'll just move everything to the right a little bit. So we have, so we have four, five, two here. So we have four, five, three here, right? So we want four, five, two to touch four, five, three. So everything's in order. Okay, perfect. Let's keep on going. I just wanted to demonstrate how I do this at full speed. Okay, so this is um, how I would do this. Um, so if I'm actually doing this and not recording, so I would just grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight pages here. I'll use the board itself to hit both ways so then the pages are aligned. Okay, so then now I'm just going to align first the horizontal um, bar at the top. Now I'm going to align the vertical and then just push it over the line. I'm going to put in the paper clip, press here, one clean cut. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm just going to align the pages. So this is 211 and this is 258, which aligns with 259 here. Okay, let's do another, the final one. So this is one, two, three, four. So we just have four pages as the final one. We don't have eight, but that's okay too. So I'm just going to hit it. I want to hit it on this side. So I'm going to hit it on this side first, and then hit it on the vertical side, just to align it. And I'm just going to grab it just like this. And I'm just going to put it into A5, align the horizontal here, align the vertical, push it over the vertical line, press, bring the paper clip in, one queen cut. Perfect. Okay, so. Now, I'm just going to put in 227 and 242. Okay, so now we have just these two sections here. So I'm just going to move this around here. So now we actually have just these two sections here, right? So we have the, we have this section, which is the bulk section. This is the, so it's just from the, one to 234 and this section here which is 235 to 468 so 
we just need to place these sections together because 234, 235, right? So we just place them together like that. And then we're just going to hit these together. This right here, if I just measure the spine, so if I can just press this together pretty roughly, just press together this top part there, and I'll just measure it. So I have approximately, I'll call it, it's 2.8, I'll call it three centimeters, three centimeters. Okay, so I'll just chop one more sheet because we will need one sheet to place on top of um, our text block here. So we'll need two, like a scrap sheet to place on the top of here and on the bottom, okay? Because we want to um, have that to protect the actual text block from the glue, the PVA glue that we'll be using, okay? So we're gonna be removing the scrap sheet just before we actually um, glue the cover on, but we'll have it protecting it for the cover and also for the text block kind of glue for the spine. Okay, so let's just do this real quick. So I'll just cut this as A5 length. We only need one kind of scrap blank sheet here. And let me just bring this in here. Okay. I'm aligning the horizontal line first. Okay, that looks good. And I'll also align the vertical line. Looks good. Okay, now we just go over the vertical line. Okay, it looks good. Okay, so I'm just gonna chop this one clean cut. We have two sheets right here that we can place on top of the cover, right? So we can just go like this and we can just place it on top. So let me show you how I place it on top here. So I'm just gonna grab my book here. So the text block, I wanna put one on top of here. Just protect the cover from this first page from glue because the cover will kind of get some glue on it and it can tear the first page there. So we're also gonna place some, this other scrap sheet on the back of this, okay? So I'm just gonna put this right here. So this will kind of just protect it during the glue, gluing process. Hello, hello, hello. We are back uh, in my shed and we are here to stick this text block together. But first of all, we need to actually sand this text block down. So very luckily, I do have this, um, uh, this bench here, which also serves as basically a vice. Okay, so a, a grip, a grip, a clamp. So you can see that it will, it has a really nice clamp here. You can use clamps, but a clamp is just way more annoying, honestly, because it won't actually, it'll kind of get in the way, okay? So because if I, if I just grab a clamp here, you see, so if I try to clamp this, right, you actually have this bar, this bar here, which gets in the way, which is actually really annoying. So it's much better if you have a vertical kind of grip like this, you could potentially do it like this. I don't actually know how you could use a clamp like this, but I'm guessing if you use your imagination, anything can kind of work, I guess. Anyway, let's get started and let me just put this into the clamp first, okay? So make sure that you stick the right side first, okay? So this is how, this is the, the manga, right? So I want to have obviously this right side here to be stuck together, okay? So we don't actually care about the this side here. This side here can be whatever. So let me just, first of all, make sure I'm gonna stick the right side because if you stick the wrong side, well, you're not, you're not gonna be able to unstick this side, okay? You're not gonna be able to unstick this. Okay, so let me just um, do this. Okay, so first of all, let me grab this and let me just make the pages all the same, right? Okay, so let me just, first of all, just hit the page a little bit. And let me just also just make sure they're vertically aligned as well because I don't want it to be too unvertically aligned as well either. So I want it to be vertically aligned as much as possible as well. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna take out this page and make sure that I'm seeing this. Remember, we do need the blank side, the blank sheet in front and behind. Okay, so in front and behind. Okay, otherwise you will have problems, okay? Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna 
couple more times. This is the most important edge. This needs to be aligned, like 100%. Okay, the other sides doesn't matter so much. Is I'm actually just going to, uh, like, move this here. So I'm gonna just make this wider. The straight edge here now must go on top, okay? It must go on top. So we've been hitting it all the time. But what I'm saying about that is, like this edge that we want to glue, it must be facing upwards, okay? It must be facing upwards. Okay, so the edge we want to glue, so I'm just going to hit it and then reverse it. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm just going to hit it. Okay, and can you see I've hit this edge on the bottom now. Now I'm going to flip it, okay? So I'm going to flip it and just hold it, okay? Hold it as much as possible and just put it in, okay? Put it into here like this and then I'm just going to Tighten it up, tighten it right up, okay? Well, let me actually just bring it to the in a little bit more. And then I'm gonna tighten it right up. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm tightening it as much as possible. Okay, so you might also need to tighten the other side, but in, others, in this case, it's very tight for me. And then, uh, that's pretty tight. I'll say this is pretty tight here. So this is really nicely tight. Okay, and you can just see the edge is really nicely done. Okay, so we have this done. So this is how we're gonna do the double binding. But before we're gonna do that, you can see I have brought my uh, P2 mask here because we are going to be doing some sanding of this edge first. Okay, so let me just show you how we do that with a file. So I'm just gonna put on my mask because, you know, I know that when I'm sanding this, I'll get a lot of um, paper dust. And last time I did that, I started like uh, coughing and obviously that's not a good thing. Okay, so keep, always keep yourself safe. And let me just grab my file. Okay, so we're gonna be using this file and we're gonna be sanding this down, okay? So I'm just gonna be pretty much holding it with one hand and then just sanding it. You can see actually, there's actually a small difference here in the cut. So here, this, this right hand side of the book is actually longer and the, basically the idea here is we want to make that as even as possible. Okay, so we want to make sure that this entire thing is even. Okay, so I'm going to just start sanding it and holding it. Okay, so just sand and hold it. Okay, at the same time. Okay, when, when you hold it together, it'll make it a lot easier to sand. Okay, so you can use both, you can use both sides. And we, the goal of this is to make the text block as even as possible. So when we do this gluing, basically it will glue the best as possible, okay? So I'm just gonna start by sanding it. I'm gonna hold it and just sand down, okay? So I can see just this, mostly this side needs to be more even, okay? Okay, so just keep sanding this. And we want it, we want it very evenly sanded, okay? so. Don't worry about damaging the book, it's, it's gonna be okay. Like you don't wanna like, obviously you don't wanna like rip the pages too much, but if you're just, if you're just sanding down the cover here, it's okay. So you can also just hold the book like this and then just uh, push the file forward like this, like it's pretty much like a plane. Use it to sand kind of just the areas that you need. This is a very like, um, specific sand kind of thing, as in like it'll sand like a very specific area and focus it just like this because it's kind of like a plane, it's acting like a plane here by chopping off the top, like peeling off that top layer, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we want to actually sand this a fair bit, okay? So I'm just using the flat edge, so right here I'm using this edge here and I'm just sanding it down, okay? I'm gonna make sure to sand both sides, don't forget to sand one side, just because you're focusing on one side. Because I know that this side here is less even, but the other side still does need to be sanded, okay? So both left and right. Because we wanna make this as even as possible. Of force to really start 
filing down this paper actually so one hand to steady it and the other hand just to do the sanding. And I just get around this. Ugh. Okay, I think that's as close as we're gonna get, honestly. So, we're just gonna brush this off and start the double fan. So, I'm just gonna brush this off. Okay, so now we're on to actually gl gluing the spine together with PVA. So first of all, we kind of just need like a scrap piece of paper for just gluing, just putting the PVA glue on. Okay, so we'll put this on the other side here. So we're just gonna put this, um, right here so to add the PVA glue onto. Now the next thing we're also going to need is we're also going to need just basically um, uh, these two. Okay so we're going to have just basically, so these are just folded sheets of paper okay so I just folded them in half okay just so it's kind of just strong. Same with this one here it's just some scrap piece of paper I just folded in half okay so just for on either side. So because what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be just pushing this like this, okay? So we're gonna be pushing it like this, okay? And then what we're gonna be doing is we're just going to be doing, so I'll just do a practice run first just to show you how it, how, how it is. Now, PVA glue, a really important point, PVA glue dries really, really fast, okay? So it dries super quickly. You need to work really quickly, okay? If you don't work really quickly, you're going, you're, the PVA glue is gonna dry before you can actually properly glue it together. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do, let's just do a practice run first. So I'm just gonna hold it just like this first, and then now I'm just gonna push it down, and then I'm just going to glue the sp spine here. So I'm just going to put the brush across it like this. Okay, so I'm just going over it. And I'm just letting the, the glue go onto here basically. Now, let's do the other side now. So once we have this, we're gonna do this side. Okay, so you can grab another piece of paper here if you need, uh, like another scrap piece of paper, like another scrap piece of paper here, if, in case there's glue that gets on here. And I'm just going to put it in like this again. So I'm now gonna like hit it, hit it the other way, okay? So now it's, it's folded the other way. Now I've just got it like this, and I'm just gonna glue it like this. So this is what it means by double fan, because we're just going to be fanning the pages out one way and then just fanning pages out the other way and just gluing it together. Okay, now when that's done, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove these pieces of paper here. So I've got some other two just pieces of paper that I'm just gonna go like this. So you're gonna to have to just smooth it out first. So you're just gonna smooth it out and remove the excess glue like this, okay? So just like this, and then just press it together. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab these two pieces of paper here and just put it like this over the book, okay? So I've just cut these two clean pieces of paper here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab this and I'm just gonna grab this here. And now we're just gonna clamp it together because once I have these scrap pieces of paper, I can just uh, clamp this together without so much fear of this actually causing it to tear or anything. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab it like this. And then you can see that pretty much I'll clamp it and then I'll do it like that. But obviously in this case, uh, I won't need to do that. Okay, so, well you can actually just put it this way as well. You can just put it over here. But anyway, let's do the actual one now. It's just, Open my PVA. I want to just start pouring a little bit, okay? So I'm going to pour a fair amount because I don't want to run out of PVA midway. Okay, that was probably a little bit too much, honestly. But we're going to have to use that later anyway, so it's okay. I also have a cloth here just handy just to wipe away this PVA glue here, okay? So this excess PVA. Okay, cool. Now, let's get ready. So I'm just going to grab my brush 
and we are going to get started here. So I'm just going to charge my brush uh, full of PVA here. So I'm just dipping it in, okay? So into the PVA, making sure there's enough PVA glue on this. Okay, now I'm just gonna let it, just leave, leave it right here, which is a second. And now we're gonna actually bring this in. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to pick up this brush here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this right down like this. Okay. Oh gosh. Ugh, this is a little bit more annoying than I was envisioned. Okay, here we go. So we've fanned it out one way. Let me just grab some more glue just to make sure we have enough. And let's go. Okay, so once we start, we have to keep moving really quick. So we have to do the other side. So, okay, so I've got it out this way and now I'm just gonna paint. So don't worry about the excess glue. We're just going to paint this, this way here. Okay. Okay, wow, this is actually quite a big book. So the amount of glue that we need is actually substantially more than before my previous books. Okay, so I'm just trying to dip it in and because we're gonna have to work fast. I need to work a little bit faster. Okay, and let me just grab more. Okay, just charging it up and then just putting it down, laying it down onto the paper. Okay. 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 There's actually quite a fair bit. I don't care if the, the PVA drips because yeah, we kind of we kind of need to worry about that later. Okay, so now, okay, that's good. We've done this side, which is good. We've we've fanned it out this side, and we've put it all on this these covers now. Okay, it's starting to dry, so we need to go to the other side now, quick, quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this the opposite side way around now, and now I'm going to push down on the opposite side. So let me just push down this way, please. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna grab the glue and we're gonna just put, apply glue to the other side here. And I need to work pretty quick because once, once we've applied this glue, it starts drying very, very quickly. Okay, so it basically has no drying time, so we really need to work fast. Okay, so I'm just applying as much as we need. Okay, so I'm just like, probably don't saturate too much we don't need that much glue, but we've just applied both sides, which is good. Okay. Okay, I think we're good. I think we've applied enough to both sides here. Okay, so now this is good. I'm gonna take this, oh gosh. I'm gonna take this off. This is kind of why we do have this scrap piece of paper here in front because we are kind of getting some ripping because you can see it's already drying on this page. So if I can just remove this, please. Okay, please. Just let me remove this. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Now I'm just going to smooth this out again. Just smooth it out. Just remove the excess glue. You should have a towel handy. Okay, so just wipe the excess glue away. That's okay. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to smooth this, okay? Smooth this down, okay? And just smooth it. And, okay, good, okay. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to clamp this together. So I need my two pieces of paper here that I had before. I wanna put one on either side, just like this. I'm gonna press it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put these two scrap pieces of wood there. And now I'm just going to grab my clamps here. Okay. Let me just move this here. And now I'm just gonna grab these, these on either side. I'm just gonna you can just please clamp from this side here first. 
just clamping these relatively tight if I can. Okay, so I'm, clamp I'm clamped this side. I'm gonna clamp one in the middle as well, so I'm just getting this pretty tight. Clamp one in the middle. Just like this. Okay. Oh shit. Um, this is not gonna work, is it? Well, actually, it is kinda. Okay. So I can just get these two pieces of paper just folding downwards. Because I was kinda getting the point where I was getting the clamps in the glue, which you don't wanna happen. Okay, so you can have this pretty tight. Okay, now the third one will be on the left hand side, on this side here. Okay, and we're just going to put this right here. Okay. Okay, something like that. Okay. We have this being clamped pretty tightly, so it's going together. <clears throat> okay, so that the spine and everything is just going together. Okay, good. So I probably would have preferred if it just. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna do that. But, but I'll do this because right now it's not applying the pressure right. Let me just do this one more time. Shit. Um, in fact, let me just, first of all, kind of ruined that one, that part there, but I'm just going to get it there. Okay, um, now, let me just put this paintbrush back, and let me just unclamp this for a second. I want to bring these wooden, wooden things right up, because they do need to be clamping the right place. And the right place is the spine, right? So we need to be clamping this place here. So if I can just bring these up. Okay. okay, that's better, that's better. That's a lot better. I like that a lot more. Okay, now let's just bring this in. Okay, yeah, that's clamping the top part a lot better. So we're gonna be clamping the spine together, not the other parts, okay? Now if I can just clamp this like this. Okay, wait a second. So I wanna be clamping it. Just make sure that it's not going to either side. I'm gonna go this way, okay. Yeah, I just wanna make sure it's drying straight. Cause I made that mistake before. Okay. Great, okay, so now what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna wash this off because PVA is water soluble, so I can just wash, wash this off in water and the brush will be fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that. Brush is clean because I've just uh, add, added water to it. I've just washed it with water. And this is gonna be drying. So I'm just gonna leave this glue here because I'm gonna use it for the cover in a bit. Yeah, it's drying a little bit more straight. So let me just, because I can see it's kind of tilted to one side. clamps are hand tight now. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so that's drying better. Okay, anyway, now I can use my ruler here and I can just measure how thick it is. 2.6, still 2.8. Yeah, it's 2.8. So I'm gonna call it three, three centimeters. I'm gonna leave this for 30 minutes around and then I'm gonna come back with the cover so i'm just going to make the cover real quick okay so now we're going to have to design the cover while the spine dries okay and we kind of want to just put it on top 
of the spine while it's still drying because that will make sure it like sticks better and we don't have to like wait and glue it again. So basically we're going to be printing something like this. Okay. So we're going to be printing something where it has like a cover here. It has these thing, these kind of dots here and it kind of just easily does this. So we want to print some, a cover like this on this A3 paper. So what are we going to be doing here? As they say in math class, when you don't understand something, just draw a diagram. Times 148 mm. Okay. So, well, it's technically 148.5, but nobody, nobody really cares about that. So anyway, let's do this. Okay. So, so this is a hundred, this is 210. Okay. That's fine. This is, this is 210. That's fine. And then we need 148. Okay, so I'm just going to rule 148 here. So I'm just going to rule this out. Oops. Rule this here. So I'll add an extra three in it here. Okay. Here we go here. So this measurement is 210 M M. Rip texture. I'm going to go, have to grab a new. Do I have enough text to cut down? I have a better text now. Okay, it's in a different color, but screw that. What about, I don't care. Um, so this is 148. Jesus Christ, it's worse. I take it back, this is even worse. Okay, this is so much better, I don't know why. Anyway, 148 millimeters. Okay, so now let's just put in two arrows right here. So this one here is three, so 30 M M. Okay. So overall, how much is this distance here? All right. That's what we need to calculate. Okay. So, so we have 326 mm up top. So this is the 30 millimeters for the spine. So this is why we need an A3 piece of paper because we will have to print this exactly onto there. Okay. So that's kind of the reason why. So you can now see what we kind of need here. Okay. So what do we need? We need 210 times 326 millimeters. Okay. So that's how we come up with dimensions for this. Okay. And this will be a 30 millimeter column in the middle. Okay. So, so we're going to be making the cover in InDesign now. So let's get started. So as we saw in that illustration there, we need a new cover, which is of the following measurements. So I'm going to go file new and I'm going to go document. Well, actually I can just go create new here. So file create new, and then I'm going to go to print. So you can see, so we're going to go with an A5 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change these measurements here. I'm going to change this to millimeters. And what we're going to do is obviously we have 210 is the height right but we want to change the width here to be 326 millimeters okay you should see that should change it to landscape orientation okay so now we want to have two columns here and we want to have this as the, your spine width here so i want to change this to 30 okay and make sure that your margin is actually zero here this is the the column gutter which is 30 which is the spine uh width here uh and also we need to actually add in uh, 3.175 to the bleed. 3.175, okay, to the bleed here. Okay, and I'm just going to create this here. Okay, so now we actually have the bleed in there because like if we don't have the bleed, uh, it won't actually do it correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create the, um, I'm gonna create this thing. So I'm just gonna create 
so now wait cancel so i'm just going to create the rectangular frames so i'm just going to you can see that it's actually outside of it so i'm just going to press Control z so i'm going to click on the rectangular frames tool and i'm going to create the frames for everything so everything can fit inside so let me just uh click on this and just get it inside the uh, column here i'm just going to make another one another rectangular frame here let me just press Control minus so then I can make sure I can see everything. So I'm just zooming out. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is within the box as well. So yeah, so we have all the frames here now, which is great. So I'm just going to actually save this over as Miriko-chan Miriko cover. I'm actually just gonna find a, a cover for Miriko-chan. Miriko-chan, the best way I've found is really just looking on Mangadex because they usually provide the covers um, themselves. Um, so if you just go to art here, um, so here is volume one. Okay, so I'm just going to um, save this image and I'm just going to go to, um, I'm just gonna call this uh, manga printing, wait, where is it? Okay, yeah, whatever, so I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna put it in manga printing. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this um, Miruko-chan and I'm gonna call this uh, front cover. Okay, and I'm just gonna save this as a second cover. Like, why not? Um, because I have both volumes, even better. I don't even need to create a back cover. So, great. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to create, I'm going to use Photoshop just to create this, but really you can use whatever you want. Um, I'm just more used to Photoshop, so I'm just going to use Photoshop here. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create new and I'm going to create a custom here. So, or actually I'm just going to go to print here. You can go to A5, right? So we need, we need this to be the height the same, but again, what is the, what is the, uh, millimeters so for the spine it's 30 millimeters right so I'm just gonna have that and I'm just going to create this okay so we should have a very long and thin spine here so we've created a very long and thin spine which is great and now we're just going to kind of create the type within it so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call the I'm just gonna start typing I want to make this into black I think so I'm gonna make this into black and what I'm going to call this is Miruko-chan, just the name of the manga. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so I'm just going to switch back to the move tool and click on this um, text, control T. So control T means to, so once I click on the text layer here and press control T, that means to transform it. Okay, so I'm going to hold the shift key so I can, uh, when I rotate here, so I'm just going to, first of all, hover around here and you can just rotate it like that and just hold the shift key to get into increments uh, uh, to snap. But anyway, I'm just going to control Z and just go back to here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to control T. Or in fact, no, I'm not going to control T. I'm just going to size it down in, as a text. So I'm going to se select the text tool and click on this, press control A and just size it right down. Okay, so I'm just going to size it right down to that. Okay, that looks pretty good. It doesn't look too bad. Could look worse. I'm using Bevis New again, so you can just change it to Bevis New because we did download that earlier. Um, okay. Um, I can just. Oops. Um, I can just make another text here. So what I'm going to call this is 400 pages or 468 pages just because, I don't know, I kind of like that kind of thing. So I'm just going to control T again, uh, rotate this. So first of all, I had to select the layer, press control T and then rotate this, hold the shift key. So it goes to this and then we have something like this. Um, yep, I can just create a thing in the middle here. So I just add the text tool, oops. So I'm just gonna go like that, 468 pages. 
doesn't look bad um let me just see is there any kind of number on this um font here um i'm just having a look um if so i'm just having a look at the the images i downloaded so for both of those so if i go under manga printing and i go miriko chan front cover um nah it's not really worth grabbing those numbers because normally i could just grab that oh actually i could why not you know what i'll grab it anyway so let me just start a new and i'll just start this as 1920 just so i can actually see what i'm wait what the heck hello file new and file new i want a 1920 by 1080 i said i want a 1920 by 1080 and then i'm just going to um grab both of these just slot them in doesn't really matter because what i'm just doing is i'm just grabbing these so then i can just grab the number okay so i'm just i just click and drag them in so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab um the circle circle select tool and i'm just going to grab this much in fact so you can actually hold the shift key here so you can you can make sure that you have a circle but let me just grab from this probably this corner here and yeah that doesn't look too bad and if i just um control c that hello what the heck control c right, so i need to select the front cover first select this layer here by clicking left clicking on it and then just press control c once with this selection so and then you have this so you have this so again well, let me just do that again like for example if i wanted this two here i could just grab so again just click click in the corner and hold shift okay so that you're you get a circle okay you can obviously see that I was wrong so if i just go from here and i hold the shift key and i click and drag you can see i got like a good selection this time so i'm gonna just do this and make sure if i press c Control c you can see it doesn't copy because it says could not complete because the selected area is empty because i'm selecting the front cover if i i need to have the back cover this is the back cover here back cover layer selected press Control c and now I can also press Control V, and you can see I also have that too. So I'm just going to call this uh, one and two, okay? And I can just press Control T just to size this right up. So for example, if I wanted this down here, I kind of can have that there if I wanted. Okay, so you can kind of have something like this, and then just like use drop shadow kind of thing, um, and just maybe distance it out, maybe uh, maybe that kind of thing. It doesn't look too bad. And then I could actually have this 468 pages in on top of that. Uh, interesting. I'm just, I want to see how the drop shadow looks. Now the drop shadow looks pretty bad. Um, I'm just seeing how I could kind of organize this. Um, but anyway, let me just, I'm going to grab the one instead probably um, and just bring it down here. Because I don't really like the two anyway. It's not supposed to be two because it's supposed to be the first volume anyway. Um, I also can kind of just mask that out. I probably will just end up masking that out because we don't really need. So if I, I'm going to use the lasso select tool because I'm just going to select a rough one because I don't need the black part of that. The black part of that is kind of distracting. So I, I made a small selection and I'm just going to click on, make sure I've clicked on the layer here, the one and just mask it out. So you can see that that's how it looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me just bring this up just a little bit so that it looks a little bit better. Um, let me see how this is gonna look. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah, this looks pretty good here. I kind of like this. I'm gonna change this to uh, maybe Miruko, just to kind of red maybe. Uh, maybe not that red, but maybe something like a red like that. That doesn't look bad. I kind of like that so yeah so we can see that we've kind of created a spine here I'm just gonna save this um, uh, let me just call this as so me Ruko Chan spine uh, 468 pages okay we have this here and now let me just go file export and add, export as and i'm just going to export this as a png in fact uh, and i'm just going to go export and let me just put this into manga printing and i'm just going to call this miriku 
John 400 pages. So this is the spine. Okay, yep, so we have, the and now I'm actually just going to put in everything. So again, basically the, uh, this front cover is gonna go on this side if it's a manga. If this is, this is because, so this is because the uh, cover on a manga which reads from right to left will always be on this left side here. I know from experience. Okay, so if you have a normal book, however, control Z this, if you have a normal cover, which reads from left to right, so a normal book, like a normal Western style book, left to right, the front cover will be here. Okay, but we have a manga. Okay, so that's why the front cover will be on the left side here. Now the back cover will be this, and then the spine will just be this one here. So if I can just drag in this spine.png, and that's good. We actually also need to add in the spine indicators because it's very hard to see where the spine is. And you can also have like an escape fold as well. I'll show you how to do that if you want. So basically what we need to do is we need to add this within the, um, within the bleed there. So we need to add in. So the easiest way to do this is to really just do it from here and just add in like a small kind of box here. Okay, so that's kind of it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to move this box up and hold the shift key, okay? So it needs to be within the bleed. So within this red line there, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom here. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm going to just put it within here. So it just uh, snaps. Okay, maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller, but I'll just put it within here so it snaps. And then I'm just gonna grab, go back to my move tool, my selection tool, and just move it downwards and hold the shift key. Okay, so you can see there, it just adds it within there. So when we print, you're gonna see this line, so you're gonna be able to um, actually um, know where it is. Now, if you wanna add in the, uh, the escape folds, generally I find that they're, they're best added in, like, so you add like a one millimeter, like one centimeter, which is 10, uh, which is 10 millimeters, okay? So what we can do here is we can just add in from this side here, and we can just add in kind of just a, so you can see what it measures. So I'm gonna add in 10 mm. Okay, so this is 10 mm. Okay, so if you wanna add in a escape fold, just put in that, so it just is 10 millimeters. I saw the width there. So I'm gonna just bring it up and hold the shift key. Okay, so you can see that now it's just brought it up right there. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. So I'm just going to uh, click and drag from this side here and you can see that the width is 10 mm, okay? So that's good, and now I'm just gonna click and drag and hold the shift key, so then it moves vertically up, right? So if you hold the shift key, it's gonna move vertically upwards, and it still needs to be within the red line there. You can see that both of these, like all these here are within the red line. If I just control plus, you can see that they're all within that red line there. I can actually just move this up to align with everything if I hold the shift key. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they're within that kind of line there. The reason is because otherwise it won't actually print correctly. So same thing here, I'm just going to add a one millimeter kind of indicator so we can do an escape fold. So it's up to you if you wanna do this escape fold. Generally, I don't find it's really that helpful. Um, it's supposed to put less pressure on the book if you have like an extra fold here, but that's kind of up to you. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make the width 10 mm here again. So you can see the indicator which says 10 mm. And oops, well actually, I'm using the wrong tool. I need to use the rectangle uh, tool. So I'm just gonna add in 10 mm. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Cool, perfect. And now I'm just going to bring this down to a line. Oops, not that. I wanna click on the thing and I wanna uh, drag it down, hold the shift key, hold the shift key, remember to hold the shift key. And now I'm gonna click on this box, drag it down, hold the shift key, and we have it there. Great. So now we have all those things within there. I'm gonna save this. Um, and you can actually just make templates out of these uh, files so then you can 
easily do this later. So you can just, I don't know, you could have like an empty version of this file here um, that's just used for like as a template for you to create new covers. But anyway, now we can actually export it. So I can go file, export, and I can just go file, export, Miroko Chan cover. That's fine. I'm gonna save it. Because what I did is I just went to, um, I think high quality print, was it? High quality print. Yeah, so I, I used the high quality print preset and then I just changed it down to marks and bleeds, just turned, uh, sorry, just turned on crop marks and use document bleed settings. Okay, so that's all I did. And that's fine. You can save a preset, just call it manga uh, A5 bleed. Okay, and now we're gonna export and hopefully that will have created the PDF. If I just check here, it created this cover. Let's have a look. Yes, perfect. So if you can just see here, I'm gonna put this into full screen. You can see that we have these lines here which indicate where the folds should be. Okay, so this is really gonna help us when we print this out. Okay, so this is actually just perfect. So now we can actually just print this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to print this so i'm just going to grab my board and we're actually i'm going to show you how to print this as well from my iphone okay so i'm now going to show you how to print this so i'm going to use this quill uh board here so it's like two, the 200 gsm board and i'm just going to take out one of the sheets so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, put this into the printer so first of all i'm going to take out this is the a3 okay so this is the a3 kind of thing here and I'm just going to take it out and I'm just going to put it on a table here and I'm just going to slot this in okay so I'll show you how to do that in a second so if you just see how I'm slotting this in here so I'm just basically just putting it in putting it in like that and just slotting it in it's not really anything special okay slotting it in because this is, this is just going to put it into the right place to print. And now just place it straight and gently, gently, gently find where it's going to push in. Okay, that's good. And we're just going to push this right in. Okay, good. So you can just see on the print, on the printer itself, it does kind of say, uh, uh, set two percent, you just press okay because it's A3 sided. And then now we're gonna print this out. Let me just go Control P and let me just um, do this. Uh, that should be fine. Landscape. I'm gonna print using system dialog here. I'm gonna change it to more settings and I'm gonna change this to use A3 paper here. Okay, so I'm gonna use A3 and I'm gonna use, yeah, standard vivid looks good. Um, high is too much um plain papers yep that's fine and we're just going to print this out um i'm just going to go print and we'll see how this goes so I less valuable paper first and then print on the more expensive paper after you tested that it does work okay so you can see it is coming out which is good Yes, okay, so we do have it printed. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so we're now gonna cut this out. So basically, um, we have a look here. So we do have like the printer marks here. So this will show you where to do it. I'm gonna use actually a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver to make sure I cut this properly. So I'm just gonna rule a line. So I'm just gonna basically um, follow both the the top of the page here, this line here, and, and just also there. Okay, so you can see that I kind of made just like a, a indentation there, right? If you look at the cover there, it's a very thin kind of indentation there. But uh, if I just press down with it enough force, you'll see it kind of appears across here okay. of creating an indentation 
Yeah, close enough. Okay, we've got that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, cut this out. So I'm, I'm going to leave these black marks in. Don't cut these. So I'm going to cut it very roughly first. So don't cut those out. Don't cut, cut the black marks out because we do need that to actually fold it. So I'm just cutting it roughly just to remove as much material as, as possible. So just around the sides because I don't need to care about just this, this part here. So again, don't cut the the fold marks and the escape folds out. Leave these black marks in, okay? Um, in fact, we can cut a little bit closer than that. So we can cut like, we can cut a little bit closer, just close to the, close to the marks, but not actually cutting the marks, if you know what I mean. Okay, so we're getting, You can tell how thick this paper is because it really cuts really satisfyingly. So again, cut close to the marks, but don't remove the marks, okay? Please do not remove the marks because we're going to need to use them to actually do some folds in a short bit, okay? So Okay, so we have cut this out really, really roughly now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a cut at every one of these points here. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a small cut and I'll just show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut, try to cut straight. Okay, so you see what I did here? So I made a cut like right here. I made a cut right here at that point where there, there is the black line kind of thing. I wanna do the same with every one of these. So this will indicate where I need a fold. Okay, so I'm just going to Make cuts along the line. Okay, try not to cut into the actual cover. Try to keep it outside of the cover, if at all possible. Okay, so we're just going to do that. Okay, cool. So you can see that we have these four folds here, these four cuts. So that will help us on the other side when we're just gonna rule a line basically to fold the cover. Okay, so let's just do this. So same thing on the other side. Let's just do those cuts. So just make sure that you don't cut into the actual cardboard of the cover um, because, yeah. So just cut a little bit less than you think you have to, okay? Because the front of the scissors will cut a little bit more. Okay, and... Okay, perfect. So you can see I also have the four kind of cuts here. So this is for the escape fold here if you want to do it. So I'll do it anyway, but honestly, I don't really like it that much, I probably will even go without the escape fold, but up to you. Okay, so let's go. So we have this here now. Let's get the ruler and we're actually just gonna rule, we're gonna connect these two, the cuts on the this side here. So I'm just going to grab my ruler and find the two cuts which are together. And I'm just going to like rule down, basically um, press just, hard and then but like not too hard you don't want to cut through the paper this is this is thick paper so it doesn't matter but if you have thin paper you're going to cut through the paper if you press too hard with your flathead screwdriver or your bone folder okay so we just want to trace over that line make sure that it's it's nice and i'm going to trace over it okay there we got it okay so now we can actually just make a fold right here. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is, well, so this outer fold here, well, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna trace all the lines first before I do any folding. Okay, because just it's just easier that way. So let me just do this. Oops, go away. Okay, so I'm just gonna trace over that line so then we have a good indentation over the whole area. Okay, so you can see I have a good indentation here. So we have these two kind of indents inside of it. Like two kind of indents, which will be where we do the fold and will help mark us, like help uh, actually execute the fold. Okay, let's do the same thing here. So we're just following the cuts to make these folds. 
So I'm just tracing over the folds. You can press down decently hard. Okay, that's good. And the, the final fold here. Okay, so you can see we have these four folds, these four folds that we're actually gonna do. So just make sure, so these two, so let's do the inner folds first, okay? So let's just fold like this. So you need to fold just the inner one, not this outside one, not this outside, just the inner one here, okay? The inner one and the inner one here. So inner, inner. Let's just do that. So we'll fold it inside because this is exactly how it should look. Okay, so you can see I'm just folding it like that. Okay, so I'm just, now I'm following the how the paper wants to bend there because I've made an indentation okay and now let's do the other inner one here so we've made one and let's do the other one so let's just fold it so don't fold it the other way so don't, don't try to fold it the other way here otherwise you're going to make the fold weak okay so just leave it as it is here okay and now we're going to do the inner fold this one here this inner one right here okay so let's just fold it yep okay Fold it how the paper wants to fold, okay? So we want to fold it like this, this way. Okay, I'm just gonna fold it like that. And then just smoothen that fold there. So we've got a really strong fold there. Okay, so you can see that we've got these two inner folds. Now these two other folds are supposed to fold outwards, okay? So you want to fold these, these ones outwards because they're supposed to just stick to the inside of the book and that's the escape fold there. Okay, so let me just do that for you. So I'll just show you how to do that. So what we want to do is we want to just, instead of bending inwards this time, we want this to bend outwards. Okay, so this, this one right here should bend outwards, this fold. Okay, so there we have fold there. I'm gonna smooth it out. And there we go. So this is the one centimeter fold. So you can see how it kind of makes a, it sticks like that, so that's how the escape fold should be. Let's do the other side. So let's do this fold here. So I'm just going to fold it out, this page outwards, right? So I'm just going to attempt, hello, attempt to encourage this page to fold outwards. Sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. I just need it. Okay, just apply some Pressure. Try not to fold the other fold in the opposite way if you can, because it will make it weak if you fold the fold it in the opposite way too many times. Okay, so you shouldn't go folding it. I made that mistake, so I understand it. So yeah, here we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth it over. Okay, so now you can see what we have. So these are called escape folds here. So you can see that we have kind of like this. So this inside part will be kind of gripping the book as well. So yeah, that's kind of the escape fold. And we have this lovely, lovely cover. So now we're just gonna just cut it out. I'm gonna cut the rest out with just scissors. I'm gonna follow the indentation line that I have. So I'm just gonna press it smooth again, and I, roughly, and I'm just gonna cut and follow that. Okay, so we have a little bit of white. Honestly, I can't be bothered with that. So we have a little bit of white underneath, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to follow this indentation fold. So doing the indentations on the sides of the cover just makes it easier to follow. Um, and it means that your lines will be more straight because I had the problem where my lines basically weren't straight and the cover <laughs> wasn't fully straight. So this one will help, will help just a lot, okay? so. You can just use a Stanley knife as well if you have that, just to make those folds, but I don't, so yeah. Stanley knife with cutting board works just fine as well. But I'm just using normal scissors here.
I'm following that indentation line. So what I mean by following that indentation line is because I made that indentation before, you can see there's like an indentation that I'm just following to cut along. Scissors should just naturally kind of follow it as well if you've made the indentation line kind of deep enough. It's kind of what the Stanley knife does anyway, by itself. So, yeah. But it's just, <laughs> I don't have the cutting board, so I don't trust uh, cutting on this desk here. Okay, so this is one cover, which is fully done. You can see that we have it just all nice in cardboard. So this is ready to stick on. And we're going to stick this on in just one minute. Okay, so we are back here to attach this cover onto this. So this has been roughly around 30 minutes. And we're going to make use of this glue here to kind of stick this on. So what we're going to do first is I'm just going to put this cover aside. And I'm just going to um, detach this here. Okay, so I'm just going to see how things have gone. I'm going to put these aside. Okay, so now this is done. I'm just going to check how this has been. Okay, so I'm just going to detach these loose sheets. Okay. So again, this is why we do have the loose sheets because it's sticking a little bit to the to the uh, first sheet there. So I'm going to just try and just peel this off nicely as much as I can. Okay, so this is good, and let me just peel this off as well. Oh god. Let me just peel this off. Yeah, it's really sticking. This is this one is okay. Oh. This is why we do have loose sheets on either side. Otherwise this could just stick to your actual manga and it will ruin the pages when you try to rip them off. By the way, that has happened. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Oh, that's okay. Let me just put these loose sheets aside because I don't need them. So how are we gonna stick this on now? So we actually do need to loosen this up and we do need to just bring this cover. So we're gonna loosen this up and I'm just going to just keep it in this state here. So I'm just going to hold it with one hand, like really tightly, as much as I can. And I'm going to undo this. Because I don't want it to kind of just switch in the middle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this side right here. Okay, so let me just move the camera. Okay, so now I'm just going to actually just stick it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my brush and I'm going to grab my cover. Okay, so I have my cover here, right? So I have my cover, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring this here. Okay. I do see that this has slid a little bit. And I have just kind of push it forward a little bit. Okay, so what I'm also gonna do now is I'm just going to not don't remove the loose sheets just yet. So we're just gonna put it underneath like this. Okay, so we're just gonna put it underneath. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna apply some PVA glue to basically, so I'm gonna charge my brush by getting all this PVA glue here. Okay. 
okay and I'm just going to bring it across so it is going to drip just one thing about PVA is it does drip a lot so I have organized it so that it doesn't like, I'm not going to drip it on top of this sheet because I have the glue like right next to me okay so I just have it like this you can even just grab it like a like a, a paint kind of thing so anyway what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply it so I'm going to have to go pretty fast once I start applying it so let me just start applying this here okay so I, I don't want to go past the line I just want to apply it to here okay so I want to apply it just to this um, thing here can you even see it yes you can okay cool um, I just want to apply it to the escape folds and to the other part as well to the inside of the book okay so we want to really just let me just I don't even know I have enough glue here but let me just see if I can apply it just underneath here so don't go past the line um, if I can just grab the rest of this glue we may need a little bit more in fact well I think we have just enough in fact here which is good because I don't like wasting glue So this is your final chance. You can get rid of these blank sheets because if you don't get rid of them now, basically it's not going to, um, you're not going to be able to take them off. Okay. So once the book is actually all binded and everything, you're not going to be able to take these blank sheets off. So you can take them off like right now, basically around after I've just finished adding glue to this, I will probably just take them off. Okay. I can just grab the rest of this glue here. Okay. Okay, cool. I'll probably just also apply some glue to the actual book as well. I can just apply some to the book. Okay, so I'll just get some here and I'll just apply it to the actual book. Just the rest of this glue that I have anyway. I have it so I'm just going to apply it to the book here like this okay now we are we are ready to actually put it on so let me actually uh, put this brush aside and we're actually just going to put it in because we do need to work pretty fast considering that this will kind of just start to okay put this down on the actual thing and Make sure that this is okay. We're placing it down, and I'm just bringing. Okay, shit. I'll wash that off later. It's okay. I'll bring this in, and I'll just have those. I'll leave those blank sheets in because, like, you know what? I kind of like them as like that. So you can see that I'm just smoothing along the escape folds. And I'm just going to do it on the other side as well. So I'm just going to smooth along the escape folds here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hit it a few times. So we have all the pages kind of exactly as how we want them. And now I'm just going to press this together. So I'm actually just going to so make sure that the pages are where you want them. Okay, looks good. And now I'm just going to press this against here with a board. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a board. I'm just going to put this down here like this, just to apply some weight. And then I'm just going to um, smooth this out here as much as I can. So you kind of want to just, if I can have uh, something like a, Thing, but it doesn't matter. I'll first of all just clamp this down because I want this to be clamped. Okay. Oops. Let me just put this over here. Like this. And then I'll clamp this down before I do anything else. Okay. Now let's just clamp it. Yeah, I won't clamp it for you just yet on that side. 
because I'm just going to grab another clamp and clamp it on the other side as well. Okay. Clamping it right here as well. Okay, so I can tighten this up a little bit. Okay, I don't want it to... I'm just gonna... One second, because I don't want this to... I want that to kind of get out there. And I want this to... Shit. Because I can see that this paper, this page here is a little bit... It's creasing a little bit. If I can just... Ah, oh, it doesn't really matter. That's okay. But if I can just get that glue out there, it would be good. Because it's supposed to be like this. Yes, more more like that. Okay. Okay, yeah, good, good. Okay, yeah, that's better. Okay. Now let's just clap it again. Clamp it down. We can just bring this back in. Okay, there we go. We got significant force there. Just clamping it down. You can see there's a little bit of excess glue. We'll just try to wipe that off. We'll just gr grab it with the fingers and then we'll just wipe it off. Um, now, <coughs> I'll grab a few clamps in the middle and then that will basically be it. I did decide to leave the blank sheets in because I know that it might cause page tearing later. Um, so I'd rather that the blank sheets tear than the actual um, manga tear. So that's just personal choice, but up to you. You don't. You can do whatever you want. You can. You can leave the. You can delete. You can. You could have removed the sheets just before this step. Um, okay. So I'll just move this like this. Why not? And then we'll just leave this to, to dry overnight because PVA, it, as the, as the um, bottle suggests, it does take a, while, a substantial while to dry. It takes like up to 10, 10 to 12 hours to dry fully. So yeah, we kind of just want to give it that time. And I'm just trying to take out any glue, any excess glue and just move it out to the sides if we can. And just push in, oh god, well, I probably shouldn't push it in that much. I should just leave it. I'll leave it as it is. Um, that's okay. Okay, so I'll just leave this as it is, and I'll just leave it to dry. I'll just make sure that it's all tight, and we have this chopping board on top of it. I'll wash off that kind of thing. Okay, so what I was talking about was this. So if you see this kid's PBA glue, it pretty much dries in 10 hours. It says, apply to the surface of glue, and then clean up excess. Um, so it's 20, 20 to 40 minutes with maximum strength after 12 hours. So yeah, so you need to wait for it to, to dry for 12 hours before it gains the maximum strength. So that's why we should just leave it here and just let it be clamped here and just leave it to dry. And um, in the morning, we'll come and grab it. Okay, so I did wanna just do an update on the final result. So I did take it out of the uh, clamps and everything. And I just did want to show you what it looks like. So again, I did make a huge mistake when binding this cover. You can see everything looks good, but when I actually flip it open, this is just on the wrong way altogether. So I have just made a really big mistake with this. So really, it should have been like the other way around. So this should be the first page. So you obviously see that the cover is actually on the wrong way. But uh, I can't change that now. So that's okay. So just make sure that you check before you actually glue the cover on because um, <laughs> I have glued it on the completely wrong way and yeah so but you can see I really like how the final result has turned out like 
even if I just flip to the middle, you can see that the bi it's binding pretty well. So the, the PVA glue has dried in 12 hours, and you can see that the, the pages are very, like, very binded pretty nicely. So it's, it's not going to fall apart, and it actually looks pretty nice as well. It looks very clean. And the pages, like the top and the bottom, like you can see, like the top, like the top has a little bit of variation, but it's really, really minor. The side here, if we just look at this, yeah, so it's, this here is really pretty straight. Um, yes, there are some small variations here, but it's very, very straight for the most part. And I really like that. So I've actually just improved that on my last kind of bindings. And yeah. Also, just wanted to show off how these, how beautiful these double spreads look. Like, look at how clean these look, honestly. Double spread and this double spread as well. Oh my God. It actually looks really good. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. The, the double spreads came out really clean, which I'm really happy about as well. Because yeah, um, just organized them in InDesign. I wasn't sure if these were actually gonna work well. And good thing is they have turned out super well which I'm super glad about. So overall, a pretty good binding, I would say, and a pretty good book printed, and uh, a very, very thick book as well, because that's like 400 something pages. So I'm actually very proud of this one, even if I did bind the cover the completely wrong way, it's a very good result. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime, Nyan, out.